So quickly, I'm Robin Ginn. I'm the executive director of the OpenJS Foundation. Again, for your anniversary, thereabouts. I'm Giuseppe. I'm um, uh, chair of the Cross Project Council. Uh, is, yeah? is this? Anyway. Um, and I also do open source at IBM. Cool. Um, just a quick reminder on the code of conduct. We all want to have fun, be respectful. If you see something, say something, reach out to me or any of the event staff, um, and we'd be glad to help you out. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Some of you have seen this stat. I love to use this stat. Uh, almost 2 billion websites. Almost everyone is using uh, JavaScript in one way or another, from IoT to TVs. Um, a lot of you know that we use it um, in space with NASA. And uh, wow, so this is like big, you know, right? And, and that's just the web. So um, JavaScript, it's been around for 27 years now. So is it still relevant to emerging technologies? It's still quite relevant. And in fact, I'll try it. Yeah, I'll talk in here. Um, yeah, it's funny that Robin pulled this quote because I used to work at, uh, at the New York Times and we rewrote uh, the platform to serve the, the website. And uh, there are a number of us who were uh, pushing for it to be written in Node.js. This is a few years ago, 2011 or so. And uh, they had a bunch of PHP developers, so they decided to do it in PHP. Uh, but within a year, they started rewriting it in Node.js. So um, it's, a, it's funny that uh, the New York Times is up there. But, you know, like the quote says, everybody's chasing kind of the new shiny stuff. But uh, like, like Robin was saying, JavaScript's been around for a long time. Um, in addition to all the shiny stuff that people are chasing around, there's still a lot of people debating what's the next big, next big thing in JavaScript. Which project has better performance? Does it sound familiar? Which has better, which is easier to use? Um, and I pulled this mission statement. If you remember, if you were in Vancouver at the Collab Summit. I think Darcy asked Joe, like, what's our mission statement, essentially? None of, none of us could really remember. Um, <laughs> we wrote one. It was just a little Exactly. While it's the bylaws. Yeah. Um, and essentially, you know, Joe sort of nailed it. You know, we're here to support the entire JavaScript ecosystem. We love all 40 of our projects. They're near and dear to our heart. But we're really here to sort of, you know, support sort of that connected ecosystem in JavaScript. Um, and I think an important thing to remember is um, in doing so, uh, OpenJS Foundation does not pick winners or losers. Uh, we're neutral. We're here for everybody. Um, and essentially, as a neutral party, um, a foundation like ours um, and most folks at the Linux Foundation, we hold the copyright and trademark. So then that really ensures that it stays open for the long term. Um, and it also protects maintainers, for perhaps, from some, uh, from some maintainers' companies. So. You know, foundations play a role to protect open governance and communities from what some might say are potential hostile takeovers. Yeah, and I think this is important to talk about. There's been a lot of uh, conversation online and I think some misunderstandings about how uh, foundations work and, and particularly uh, how open governance works. Um, and, and so I think this is a great conversation to be having. Uh, so open governance is, is like a manual for how projects operate and how decisions are made uh, in a clear and transparent way. Um, they contribute to a positive place for uh, collaboration by setting some structure and uh, accountability to the process. And it's an umbrella organization. Um, and, and, you know, the, the projects operate independently. And I think, um, you know, that's really important to note. Uh, I saw some people talking about companies pay foundations and foundations pay developers to build Node.js. And that is absolutely wrong. Uh, so, you know, we're a great neutral home. Um, and, and, you know, another person talked about why doesn't some big company uh, just send a bunch of developers in to set the roadmap and build the features. Again, that's not how it works. Open governance, we have lots of rules in place for uh, avoiding those sorts of things. Uh, next slide. And so this is kind of how the structure is broken down. We, we have a, a board of directors 
Uh, we have the Cross Project Council, which is kind of our top uh, advisory committee. And then, uh, you know, we have the, the projects, uh, the developer communities. And there's really kind of a wall between each of those, you know. Uh, and, and, and frankly, the, the real work that, that happens, that drives the foundation, is happening at the Cross Project Council, which is open to everyone to, to get involved. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you can collaborate with us. Yeah, I like to say the CPC is the tail that wags the dog. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <It's the> boss. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think uh, here we are. So let's just give uh, just a quick a step back. We do love our 40 projects. Uh, so OpenJS Foundation, as many of you know, is the merger of the Node.js and the JS Foundation. Uh, almost five years ago, uh, we have a number of uh, projects, big and small. We have Appium, Jest jQuery, Node.js, Webpack, many more that um, almost everybody is using in some sort of dev environment. And one thing I love to do is just to highlight a few wins. I just picked a few projects um, that we love to celebrate every month. Um, Node um, has been really just crushing it on the security front with the Alpha Omega funding from Google and Microsoft. So really appreciate the work that's happening in that security uh, working team. Um, that shipped 19 and 20 big releases, um, and a new website's coming out. Uh, WebDriver, big uh, version 8 release, and doing some great translation. Uh, jQuery also had some security funding as well, and lots of work to shore up and modernize the infrastructure, as well as work on a sort of a consumer education uh, campaign to upgrade a lot of folks uh, on jQuery. 77% uh, of the world's websites are still using jQuery. Um, Electron, yay, Eric, Tierney, uh, 10 years, it's gone by already, uh, and V24 shipped. Um, ESLint ships all the time. If you're interested in participating and contributing, that's a great place to start as well. Um, but the one thing I would like to just share that there is a lot more to contributions uh, than code. Um, I got my start in Node years ago, working on the marketing side, um, and there's a lot that the community does within the communities, and there's a lot that we do at the OpenJS Foundation with the support from the Linux Foundation to really make a project successful. Uh, training, certifications, uh, program management, um, marketing, all kinds of great things to really help grow adoption. And so we've been talking about how JavaScript is pretty much everywhere, and with JavaScript everywhere, we need to be concerned about security everywhere. And, um, you know, the, the Cross Project Council operates uh, in a better together kind of way. And uh, last year we launched the OpenJS Foundation um, security uh, collaboration space. Uh, at the foundation we have this concept of collaboration spaces. They're like working groups and SIGs. But we uh, particularly termed it that way and structured it that way because it's really meant to bring other folks into uh, these groups, whether they're uh, in, in one of the projects or not. It's meant to bring folks in from the community to work together on this. And so, um, you know, these are some of the, 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 the wins that we have going on uh, in the foundation right now. Uh, Robin was just mentioning the, the jQuery work, which is great. Uh, the Sovereign Tech Fund, which is a huge uh, win. Um, uh, you know, nearly a million dollars to work on security in the JavaScript space. And uh, our focus is to, is to make impact across the community, not just for our projects. So that's really important. Um, and it's also, I think, maybe the first time that a government has invested in, in, in open source in this way. So it's a really huge uh, uh, win for that one. And then, like Robin had said, the, the work in the Node.js space around security uh, has been huge with the Alpha Omega project. And you can read more about all of this on the OpenJSF blog. Great. So um, just in this annual report, I do just want to really thank the community who really uh, brings it all together and makes it happen. Um, folks like Joe at IBM and others. Um, and I thought I'd just let you kind of share a little bit why <laughs> IBM lets Joe spend so much time with us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for the quote from uh, Dr. Max, who's our new uh, uh, 
board director from, yeah. from IBM. But yeah, we, in, we invest in, in open source in a variety of ways because it really serves our interest. You know, we, we use a lot of open source, we build our products on top of open source, and it makes sense for us to be engaged in those projects when we need some sort of feature or uh, are concerned about security, we are directly involved. And so uh, we heavily invest in open source and we encourage uh, other companies to as well. Yep. And we do have a lot of other companies and really we couldn't exist without our foundations. They fund us. That is how we operate. We have some training cert certification budget or revenue that you'll see. But really the majority of our programs are funded through these wonderful uh, companies, Google, IBM, Joint, Microsoft, the Sovereign Tech Fund, yeah, Meta, GoDaddy, Netflix. So really thankful for those folks. Um, and also thankful for our leadership. We have the coolest board, I think. Um, Dr. Max is here, Paula's here, who else is in the audience? Uh, but yeah, we have a, a wonderful board. It's very interactive. And actually, a lot of these board folks are really um, participating deeply in the communities as well, which is, I think is pretty unique for us. Yeah, and Robin mentioned the trainings and certifications, and you know this is a, a, a great service that the foundation built and uh, provides. Uh, so you know, and it's also a great resource for engineers and companies looking to find uh, folks to uh, to join. And uh, sixty percent off. I don't know what's the time frame on that. The whole month, the right? The whole month, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, check that out. It's a great resource. I highly recommend it. Uh, we promote it internally. Um, we get a discount as well. Not as good as that, so take advantage of that. Yeah. And it actually applies across the entire Linux Foundation catalog, so you can do Node and you can do any other technology that you Yeah, there's a, a lot of courses and certifications yeah. Yeah. from LF. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, love for you to all to participate we operate in a we call ourselves radically transparent stream yeah yeah absolutely and if you go to that link you'll find uh, a number of uh, ways to get involved our calendar is public our meetings are all public they're all um you know there are zoom links that are in the calendar invites uh we stream to youtube um, you know, uh, the, the invite for Slack is there, our GitHub uh, orgs are there. We try to do as much work as possible in uh, GitHub so that it is uh, open to everyone. Um, and, and it's not only for like transparency sake, but it's for, you know, it, for, for people to be able to get involved. They can go and look at what we're doing, see what uh, might interest them and find ways that they can get engaged. So I encourage you to take a look at that uh, link and uh, see how you might be able to get engaged. Awesome. Yep. Great, thanks. All right, well, thanks everyone for this annual report. Now I have the pleasure and honor of introducing the uh, very cool panel today. Um, I'm gonna introduce Paloma uh, from Sauce Labs, uh, Bethany Griggs from Red Hat, um, Eric from Slack, and come on up. And I'm gonna let you all take the show and just see some of how our uh, folks yeah, govern in, in real life. Well, thank you, everyone, and of course, thank you, OpenGS Foundation, for this opportunity. Um, this whole started for uh, volunteer work that I do for Pi Ladies Berlin, which I'm one of the co-organizers, and we have been running for the past two years exactly this kind of work. It's putting um, big projects, open source maintainers from the mostly Python community because it's Pi Ladies, with people that has never touched the code. And I'm really impressed to see, for me, that was very impressive because I was like, a, it is a gigantic project. Like, it's not like you can touch it. It's like a broadcast television. How will you deal with it? Because like, you don't touch it. <laughs> so I had this great opportunity um, because I'm actually a JavaScript developer, not a Python developer, um, to ask the maintainers of those big projects was to deal with it and why they look so so afraid to to deal with it. Um, there was a little introduction about why this talk. So is this opportunity for us to get to know behind the scenes of contributing to a big project? And um, here is the people who will give you all this knowledge, uh, Beth Griggs and Eric Zhao. Um, I would like to start um, 
with you presenting yourselves, uh, starting with, with Beth. Uh, a little bit about you and which project, project are you a maintainer for, and uh, I don't want to take for granted that everyone knows what Node.js is, so could you please talk a little bit about the project and yourself? Sure, yeah, so hi everyone, my name is Beth Briggs, uh, I'm at Red Hat, and um, I'm mostly, most of my open source work has been around the Node.js project. Um, I had one of the kind of more rarer entries into open source where the second I left university I was hired into a team where contributing to Node was part of the scope of the role. So um, kind of stepped in slowly, started doing some documentation and test PRs. Uh, and then what really kind of helped me and lifted me up to make, contribute a lot more was one-to-one -one mentoring from great releaser Miles Borens. And he spent like six months one-to-one -one with me teaching me how to do releases. Um, so then I got involved in a release group and from there I kind of, you know, stepped into a few more areas um, and was able to get to grips a bit more with the project. Um, more recently, kind of in the thought of paying it forward. I also mentored some other people into the release group as well, because I think, you know, there's no guarantees we're all going to be around in the project or have a job that lets us do it forever. So really paying it forward just out of courtesy and also for the st sustainability of the project. Um, and more recently, I'm kind of interested in supply chain security and how that's going to impact um, the no project specifically. And what about you, Eric? Uh, hi everyone, I'm Eric. Uh, I'm based out of Vancouver, Canada, and um, I have been working with Electron, or maintainer for Electron for the last four years or so. Um, Electron, if you don't know, is kind of a um, fuse of Chromium and Node.js and allows um, JavaScript developers to build desktop applications. And um, initially, I kind of got in almost the same way as Beth, where I uh, was an intern on the core team at GitHub at the time. And um, from there, I kind of, after I graduated, I started working at Slack, uh, which is uh, uh, an Electron app. And uh, my team right now uh, spends maybe like, you know, half their time uh, maintaining Electron. So we're a pretty big presence uh, within the maintainer space. Uh, and um, what I focus on mostly in my day-to-day -day, uh, is uh, developer tooling, uh, documentation, and community building. Yes. Mm. So it's quite interesting because you started you're basically recruited from the university inside of the project. Um, how was the difference in between what you were studying and someone opening the door, pun intended, for the open source world? How was the difference between what you were doing there in the classroom or in with yourself and then exposing yourself globally? I can, I can try that, at least in the context of Node. So the reason I ended up in the Node team at IBM is because I mentioned I'd built a few little apps with Node and, you know, was, you know, building some web servers and things. And then when I went in, I was like, oh, I'm going to be doing Node stuff. And it was kind of a surprise and a shock to be like, oh, you're not going to be building apps here. You're working on Node here. And I guess that's kind of what a lot of contributors feel as well. Like, I'm sure there's many, many JavaScript developers and Node developers using it every day thinking, how can I contribute? And there is a bit of a like, oh, wow, this is completely different going in and actually working on the runtime itself. So yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a shock and bit, a bit, bit you know, intense steps. Was it that experience for you also? Uh, it was definitely different uh, from what I expected from school. Uh, school, uh, software engineering in Canada, uh, I don't know how tailored the programs are supposed to be for industry because I ended up doing a lot of circuits and signals and electrical engineering stuff. So it's very broad. They don't really teach you the specifics of, um, I guess until you get to your upper level classes, you don't really get that uh, hands-on experience with, uh, um, with uh, software development. And at the same time, you also never really touch a project on the scope of what um, Electron or Node are. So um, it was definitely a shock coming in. Uh, but thankfully, I think the internship program, they kind of put kid, kid gloves when handling you and you're like kind of eased into the project, you know, onboarded and everything. And um, you're allocated this like time from someone who's experienced. Um, and I had a mentor who could one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, help me out with, um, with everything. Yeah. This is kind of a draft what we kind of plan to talk today, which is a little bit of behind the scenes, a little bit of why um, we're saying to you users, well, 
you should get involved and some closing thoughts. But this is a quite of uh, not that a big of audience, so um, please jump in if you have something to ask. This is a great opportunity for you to ask your questions, those that you never know when to ask. Um, so, if, kind of trying to follow this uh, trajectory here, I want to understand um, how it is behind the scene because, and I think that's a kind of a hard task because you're being involved with the project for so long but trying to put yourselves in the baby Beth and baby Eric when they were just starting to contribute um, the projects if you didn't have a chance to look at their documentations it's pretty impeccable and that was a behind the scenes question like a, how is it being part of a foundation or a big project it is actually uh, involve or change the project because um, the first thing that struck me is that you have a very clear governance model which is you go to the page and it's super clear like how can you contribute it is already laid down did that impact uh your choices of course you you mentioned a lot the mentors you had but how having this great structure and governance model helped you choosing your path in the projects tell us a little bit of behind the scenes of getting started yeah. Um, so Node's massive and like if someone came in and was like I want to contribute to Node it's like the first question is what's your interest what part because trying to keep on top of all of it like I think we all give up on like all the notifications and things it's huge um, so I think the structure really does complement helping people get their step in the door because it's broken down into teams and working groups so if you are new you can go to look at the list of teams and the working groups and be like oh hey there's a smaller group here it aligns with my interests or something I just think sounds cool and then you can go work with that group and that, I think that breaks the barrier a little, little bit because rather than walking up to a project with like a hundred collaborators or something like that who can all jump on your PR and review it it's a bit kind of intense if you can go to a smaller group that's got maybe like five to ten people meeting talking about a very narrow goal and a very narrow topic I, I think it's an easier way in because you know who to ask for help and they're probably you know a smaller group of mentors and it's just about confidence as well I think really just you've got a small group of people and you can build out from there um, for Electron, we are a pretty um, used project, but I would say that our maintainer base is relatively small. I think um, in terms of like core governance members, we have uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 at the moment. So um, it's just a bunch of engineers wearing different hats. Uh, it's, and I feel like it's um, the working group model is very useful to uh, compartmentalize kind of like what your responsibilities are and um, if you have like uh, rotations regularly like for example um, we have this uh, upgrades working group that's specifically dedicated to uh, upgrading versions of node and chromium to keep up to date so that we get um, all the latest security releases and performance boosts with each major uh, version um, of these two libraries so essentially we're it's it's very um, helpful to say who's responsible for this uh, and who's responsible for that rather than just having I think initially what, what was happening was that there was like a like people who had right access to the repo mm -hmm. and people who uh, were you know uh, core maintainers on github and like it's, it was really hard to find a delineation of like who's responsible for things who should have access to other stuff and uh, right now I think one thing that's trickled down from this governance model is that we have a lot of automation around like uh, who has permissions to certain repos who has admin superpowers just to make sure that um you know we can't just uh, someone's github account gets compromised and then like the whole thing blows up uh, and that's one of the things that we're pretty uh, wary about as you know we do have um, a lot of downloads uh, on a monthly basis uh, on uh, for the library yeah i want to break it down here because there was a lot and it was one of those things that um uh, I understand you take for granted from your, this is a daily experience for you, right? But putting yourselves in the eyes of someone who has never contributed to open source, who doesn't know where to start. And you're talking about a working group and a very organized structure, but you're volunteers, right? This is not like a, your actual job. <laughs> your resume, you have actual jobs. And how does it work for you um, to trust this structure within your volunteer commitment and how much that affects the project in, because of where I want to get here is we take for granted it's node. It's node, it's there, it's a big gigantic structure. 
but how much you play a role and how much that can be fragile because it is an open source project. Yeah, I can speak to my experiences in the release working group. So I am, I am fortunate that um, Red Hat and IBM think, you know, for Node to be a success and for us to be able to build products on Node, it needs to have regular releases. So we will fund someone to go and help out with releases. Um, on the other hand, we have volunteers in the release group. They're great. They do a lot of great work. But it is very hard to, when people are volunteering their time, to say, say a security release, we need to get one of those done, or we need a, a bug fix release at the last minute. It's very difficult to get people who are not paid to essentially be on call and drop things and just go in and fix it. Fortunately, we do have some folks who do that. And we also have some folks who sign up for like rotation. So we try and spread the workload a bit more these days, but it's difficult. And I think it's those kind of the kind of key infrastructure, key releases, the reactionary things that we, we kind of struggle with. Like everyone wants to work on a shiny new feature and contribute the code, but you get, you know, you get that nice kind of like, hey, I just built this thing, it's really cool, but you know, hey, I just fixed this build machine that's broken. It, it doesn't get the same, you know, and I think I could rant for a long time because I think this is a symptom of like the tech industry in general, caring more about, you know, shiny new than uh, maintenance, but yeah, it is a challenge. Um, fortunately, we've got some support from OpenJS for infrastructure and uh, security. So things are, you know, being recognized and we're getting better with rotations and things. But yeah, it is a challenge. Um, for Electron, I would say that uh, we do have a, a sizable amount of volunteers, but also an equal amount of people who, I guess, uh, contribute on behalf of their companies as well, um, mostly just because there are a lot of enterprise apps who use Electron. And uh, even though um, even though we have like this open governance model, we do end up having people who are thankfully like on, on very on top of it um, for uh, for releases, for upgrades, for security, and so on and so forth. Um, but at the same time, I feel like there is this kind of bus factor uh, with uh, how we operate, where like you know, if uh, it, if suddenly five, six people dropped out, then you know the project would definitely be scrambling. Um, so I think the, the governance model definitely helps offload that kind of. Uh, um, that kind of harm that can happen because, like, uh, tech, you know, everyone has like their own role, and uh, all the workload is um, divided between um, groups of people. Uh, but at the same time, I think it definitely takes individual, like, a lot of people going above and beyond to keep the project going as well. And so, where is the? Um, if we are talking. But first, well, right, if you think about, oh, it is a gigantic, it's massive. So there's this big difference and maybe contrasting between being so big and so complex, but also going along with having a great structure that helps you on board. Am I hearing correctly? So why should people fear not to contribute <laughs> and to get started? What are the benefits that has brought to you as your professional career and maybe your personal existence in the earth of being part of those big projects? Um, I think one thing for me was like Node has very, very mature contribution guidelines and processes and things. So like I know now from working in a Node project where they will say, we want your commit messages to look this way. We want you to run this linter. We want your PR to look, you know, tick these boxes. It's very um, prescriptive, the process, which has really helped me going into like any other project because now I instantly think, oh, Maybe they've got a contribution guideline process that I need to read before I open my first pull request because I, you know, it's just, it can be a bit um, demoralizing if you open your PR and people are like, hey, you didn't follow this process. It's just, it's just kind of instilled the like methods. Um, and, you know, I think it would be harder if I came from like a, started contributing in a very more relaxed kind of open source project with much less processes because then when those processes get on you, you'll be like, mm, they're kind of getting in the way. So I feel like going into the process and then seeing the benefits um, helped. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely echo that. Electron also has pretty um, good developer documentation on how to get set up and get building. Um, unfortunately, I think one of the realities for, for that is also that yeah, it's really compute intensive to build Electron locally and uh, contribute back to the core framework. Um, but um, I guess moving on to like, the the how it's I guess made me better. I I think 
it's it, it's been good to help me contribute to other open source projects. Uh, for better or for worse, everything in JavaScript is a package and you know has a GitHub repo and you're gonna make a pull request somewhere. And uh, being, I guess, a good citizen in open source uh, is makes it a lot easier to get your contributions upstreamed and, uh, uh, and merged in. And um, I think maybe that's also part of what's helpful in OpenJS is like you kind of uh, have these connections with other people from other projects um, and you're able to um, like for example if you need to, to talk to them about uh, about something in their library then it's a little bit easier to reach out and um, I had three different questions in my head I'm trying to put them in order right now but first just one question because I kind of got lost on track of time um, because I have something running here but I'm kind of oh I got lost oh Damn. So, <laughs> then I will um, jump in maybe to our conclusion pause for five minutes. Um, so, what is um, how rewarding it is, and what would be the closing thoughts about to call in to say, hey, you can be the one to save the day, but you won't save just for the community. You will have a lot of um, big. Um, Earnings from yourself, for yourself, like um, so what would be your um, closing thoughts for those mm -hmm. folks that want to step in, but they're still a little scared? <laughs> um, I just kind of echo, like, try and find a small group um, um, or a small thing that you think sounds cool or interesting and try and step in that way because it's a smaller group, more, like, narrower goals, it'd probably be easier. Um, reach out for help, like um, most folks are completely willing, um, but also kind of a call for um, maintainers because if, if you are a maintainer and you're part of a working group and you have, you know, you've been doing that role for some time, maybe take the effort to try and mentor someone else into the role as well and kind of like pay it forward because like, as I say, we're not, we may not all be around in the projects forever. We might change roles, change life, you know, anything may happen. So um, I think it really, you know, like how when you become more senior at work, you kind of, you delegate some work and you focus on, on boarding. I think, I think that approach really needs to happen because, you know, new people, new ideas, um, it helps the project evolve over time. Uh, I think the mission of open source is really cool and uh, contributing, uh, even if I wasn't, um, you know, uh, paid to do this job, I think um, throughout my contributions to other open source projects that every, like, it, it just feels like you're contributing to like a common good um, for, uh, for, for the field. So um, it feels really good. And uh, I think as, I guess as an advice to people to who may want to think about contributing, uh, it would be really helpful to maybe just immerse yourself in non-code contributions at first. Or um, sometimes I feel like it's easy if you have something in mind, like a bug fix that you're running into and you kind of know how to solve, that's easy to just kind of rock up with a code contribution. But if you're unfamiliar with kind of the inner workings of the project, sometimes test fixes, documentation improvements, and whatever can help you really um, onboard into a project by and do self-learning in that way. Um, and sometimes uh, don't be afraid to uh, ask maintainer stuff. I think uh, that's also something that is uh, pretty key, this kind of uh, interaction between community and um, the, the people who you know have right access to the repo or whatever, uh, who can maybe help you, guide you along the way. Uh, and uh, yeah. There's also one more thing that I particularly realized that I would like to have your takes and like a tip for people that want to contribute that is uh, usually newcomers especially when they're starting to code they come with like a, I want to change the world and change everything with a full of ideas and wanted to but be super hands-on on code um, but especially big projects and especially when they're open or open standards they they are on purposely slower in the process any tip for people to still maintain this energy and the enthusiasm and to stay, but really commit to stay, because I believe uh, that would be my personal tip. I don't know from you, like when you decided, take your time to choose a project, but stick to it a little while, because it takes time for you. It's like a, like a relationship, right? You don't jump into it, mm -hmm. it go slowly, and then you build a nice, good relationship. But what, what is your tip for new contributors on the take for this energy and commitment? 
I think it's important to not burn out, definitely. Um, like, you don't need to hop in right away and make a million contributions and make your, uh, like, you know, make your stamp on the project or whatever. Um, just easing in is good. And um, I think also uh, being mindful, especially if you are more of like a drive-by contributor where you want to contribute a feature, for example, um, make sure that, you know, it's also maintainable as well. I think that's something that people don't necessarily consider. They're like, hey, this works for me on my project and you know, on my fork. And uh, sometimes, you know, you, it's hard to get merged in because of uh, X, Y, Z concern. And um, with how stable I feel Electron is nowadays and how we have um, very regular releases, um, it, it's hard to, um, it's not really the Wild West where it's like, Okay, we're gonna YOLO merge uh, this feature because you you need it for your app, you know. Um, so uh, sometimes things move slower, and that's also okay. Yeah, for just really to echo, like small and regular. I think just start small, maybe change one small thing, or you know, a small thing you want to improve, maybe the docs or something like some specific specific thing you care about, and do that, do little and often. I think, and then on the topic of burnout, I think like. When you're starting to feel burnt out, like you were probably doing too much like a month before that. So like like you, you're already at that point, so really use back. So yeah. So perfect. I thank you both. I thank you OpenGS and our lovely audience. Thank you. Mm -hmm.